So on July 5th, 1852, uh, Frederick Douglass gave this speech commemorating 4th of July, uh, and it was held at Rochester, so this speech was not given in Boston, but it, it's timely and meaningful. Fellow citizens, pardon me. Allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? And am I therefore called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us? What to God, both for your sakes and ours, and an affirmative answer could be truthfully returned to those questions. Then would my task be light, my burden easy and delightful. For who is there so cold that a nation's sympathy could not warm him? Who's so obdurate and dead to the claims of gratitude that would not thankfully acknowledge such priceless benefits? Who's so stolen and selfish that would not give his voice to swell the hallelujahs of a nation's jubilee when the chains of servitude had been torn from his lips? I am not that man, in a case that the dumb might eloquently speak and that the lame mean man leap as in a heart. But such is not the state of the case. I say it with a sad sense of the disparity between us. I'm not included within the pale of this glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessing in which you this day rejoice or not enjoy in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is it is shared by you, not by you. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice. I must mourn. To drag a man in fetters into the grand illuminated temple of liberty and call upon him to join you in joyous anthems were inhuman, in mockery, and sacrilegious irony. Do you mean, citizens, to mock me by asking me to speak today? If so, there is a parallel to your conduct, and let me warn that that is dangerous to copy the example of nations whose crime, towering up to heaven, were thrown down by the breath of the Almighty, burying that nation is irreparable ruin. I can today take up the plaintive lament of appealed and woe-smitten people. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And who, they who wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land if I forget thee, O Jerusalem? Let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him, more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a shame. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license. Your national greatness, swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence. Your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. A thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. 